Hey guys, so as usual, everything on this channel is for entertainment purposes only. It is not investment advice. Alright, so it's 8.48 a.m. I'm finally doing a video that isn't 3 a.m. in the morning. I have my coffee. Let's go. So, having is about a day away. Uh, there's a few websites you can look at the countdown. One of them is Coindance, uh, which I highly recommend because they have a ton of stats on a lot of stuff that you really don't see anywhere else. Um, so definitely check them out. Another website you can check out the having countdown is bitcoinblockhalf.com. I'll put links in the description per usual. You can see they have a bunch of data as well. So there's about a day left. I thought it's a great time to talk about mining. So before I talk about mining, let's talk about some price action. The other day I tweeted this potential harmonic. Uh, I haven't talked about harmonics yet in a video, but I will. Um, basically this is a bullish butterfly. And it's kind of weird because in order to make the bullish butterfly, we have, a, have to get a massive pullback. So the idea is we have a double top, a break of a previous low, and then a huge recovery. Okay. Um, Harmonics don't always play out for me. I have a hard time figuring them out. I have a hard time drawing them. I have a hard time using them, period. But they're interesting to, to look at. Um, so I had bids in this area around 3,900 3, to 4K. Um, and if we watch this progress, so you can see I'm drawing these flags on here. Um, and there's just so much consolidation, so much price discovery trying to happen. Uh, it's hard to know with all this chop what the hell's going on. So if we look at this butterfly pattern trying to develop, you can see this flag kind of broke up. It didn't really go anywhere. Um, again, we're getting resistance on this FIB line. And I'll make another video about, video about FIBs as well. But uh, resistance, resistance, and eventually we get a, a drop down towards this target uh, on this butterfly around 39,400, 3,900 to 400. We also tagged the 4-hour cloud, which is interesting. If we look at the current price, we can see we didn't quite hit the target. Uh, we did have a negative premium between China and the West, which is always interesting. If you watch my other video, I talk a lot about that uh, and how we usually don't move up until that premium gets restored. We can see the negative premium between China and the West, and then the premium gets restored. And lo and behold, with the restoration of the premium, we get a bounce, okay? We also get a bunch of bounces on important FIB levels. Um, if you look at this on a lower time frame, a lot of people are posting about this right now. Let me just hide all this crap. Um, you can see an inverted head and shoulders here. Let me draw this out. Right, whatever. But you get the point. Okay. This is the inverted head and shoulders. The target would basically be a retrace back to 4,500. Um, the interesting part about this is even in China, you can see the volume on this volume contraction on this inverted head and shoulders, which is a really good sign that it's real. Um, so that's something to watch. If it breaks this, this you know, this previous high, 43.55, it's probably a good long entry. Um, there's not much of a shoulder formation here, so it's hard to really tell. Uh, but the inverted head and shoulders looks very real. If we go to the daily, we can see we broke out of this giant triangle to the downside. We did bounce on this 38.2 fib, so that's a good sign. Um, this is still my post-having target, 6200, uh, because it's the fib extension. If we pop the cloud on this sucker, we go to the daily. You can see, once again, we had basically a key June bounce here. Um, so we keep getting higher lows. This is a strong rejection of the zone. Again, we have a giant wick, okay? And 
Someone else who basically shared my sentiment of chop mode is Crypto Orca. He posts really great charts, really basic horizontal stuff that's uh, really useful for new new traders. And uh, before this compression happened, uh, before this move happened, there was a giant compression, and you can see that a lot of people were posting triangles. All right, so let's talk about mining. So I'm not a gold bug, but the parallels between Bitcoin and gold are pretty interesting. Um, Bitcoin and gold are both said to be safe haven from fiat currency, you know. Um, but there are also parallels with things like mining. Um, and here are some parallels, just nomenclature. They're interchangeable, divisible, scarce, durable, portable, transactable. Um, gold is less portable than Bitcoin, obviously. Um, but you get the point. So uh, when we talk about mining specifically... You can see that with gold, each successive step, well, pan, so this is like, you know, the most basic, okay, panning, sluicing, dredging, um, with, but with each successive step, more and more technology and infrastructure was needed to remain profitable, okay, so once all the gold got mined at the surface, um, got panned, or however you want to say that, um, it required more technology, more money, more infrastructure to get to more gold, okay, so we then move to hard rock mining, um, and eventually strip mining, okay? So, this kind of plays into this whole supply-demand curve idea, um, and I posted some stuff about that on my last video, but uh, gold gets more scarce and more expensive to get to. So, if demand stays the same, supply is decreasing, the price should increase, right? Um, that's general supply-demand curve rhetoric. Um, so if we look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin parallels this perfectly because we started the mining, the figuring out of the algorithm to get the Bitcoin. Okay, that started with basic computers. That's anybody, any Joe Schmo computer, laptop. Um, and then we moved up to graphics cards, ASICs, which are specific chips for mining. And then now we have mining farms in China. And it's interesting, uh, New York Times posted this. I'll link this up. But you can see these are all mining rigs, okay? <laughs> and you can see what it takes. Uh, they basically live there in this warehouse, and they just have tons of stuff, tons of electricity, uh, the heat that they deal with is insane, but um, uh, there's a bunch of stories that have been uh, reported on throughout the years, so I'll, I'll link all those up. They're super interesting, though, just check out. Um, so back to this chart. So the earliest trading view has on gold is uh, like 71, which is fine, but the point of this is up until 2004, November, um, this is when the ETF for gold got released through Spider. And uh, Toru, through Bitcoin Geek End, he does a great breakdown of why the Winklevi ETF is going to be so great for Bitcoin. Um, but basically, the price was generally stagnant on gold until this ETF came in. And uh, Toru hypothesizes that this is because uh, traders were allowed to access the gold market. Okay, um, And you could say the same thing for Bitcoin with this Winklevi ETF coming. So you can see around uh, our all-time high, we almost hit the parity with gold, which is pretty interesting uh, when that occurred. Uh, so this is the Bitcoin price chart. Um, and you can see that the bottom on gold kind of correlates with uh, the bottom on Bitcoin, the local bottom. And you can uh, watch more videos on this. Toru, again, breaks down this comparison a lot. Um, so definitely check his channel out. I'll link that up in the description. So I also wanted to introduce this other chart, which looks kind of complicated um, and has a bunch of mining uh, statistics on it. And you can pull all this up on TradingView. Um, so this top row is just Bitstamp Bitcoin price in US dollars. This is estimated transaction volume. Here we have miner revenue. This is uh, transaction fee in Bitcoin. 
Uh, this is difficulty and this is mining difficulty. And this is operational costs for miners estimated. This one's the most fuzzy. This is in USD. Um, so basically I wanted to compare all these statistics from the last having to the current having. Um, and if we look, we can see that the most stark thing to me is that the mining revenue had a pretty dramatic, dramatic, <laughs> drastic decrease here at 25 uh, when the, at the first having. Okay, we went from 50 to 25. You can see, boom. Ha uh, this affected mining revenue, obviously. Okay, I expect the same to occur here. Um, you can also no notice that the difficulty difficulty also dropped. I'm not really sure why this was. Um, my best hypothesis is that miners who couldn't afford to mine didn't, were, who weren't turning a profit shut off their stuff or there was a lack of interest after having. I'm not really sure because at that time mining revenue, mining operational costs was, were basically null compared to what they are now. So I don't really, I'm not really sure what that's about. Um, another interesting thing is that uh, transaction fees between these block halvings have basically been between 20 and 40 Bitcoin, which is quite a bit. I mean, transaction fees have been more than the block reward itself. Um, so that to me tells, says that, uh, you know, things are working as intended because in the end, the transaction fees should take over for the block reward completely if we have a healthy ecosystem. Okay. Um, this other interesting, another interesting thing is that this uh, estimated transaction volume has largely been flat. Um, if you look at, if you zoom in on this, you can see there is a bit of an increase. Um, and this is an estimated, so it's estimated transaction volume, and then I put an EMA on this uh, weekly EMA. So weekly wise, it's kind of stayed the same. So then, if we fast forward to the current having we can see difficulty keeps increasing as expected because have hash rate keeps increasing um, there's a lot of interest in bitcoin in general a lot of media interest i think that really pushes uh, people who wouldn't otherwise get into bitcoin um, a lot of this is miners racing for this block reward um, we have an increase in price that allows miners to mine who otherwise wouldn't be profitable. Um, this I can't really explain the basically de have having decrease. <laughs> this is uh, so mining operational cost this is negative so it went from about negative 20 to negative uh, 12 uh, sorry negative 200,000 to negative 120,000. I can't really explain that um, but it's interesting to, to see what will happen I expect difficulty to drop after having, as as some miners who can't afford won't you know won't be in profit anymore because of electricity costs and infrastructure costs. They'll shut off their rigs. This will bring more more centralization to mining, which isn't a good thing. Um, so another place to look at all this is uh, Bitcoin Wisdom, and you can see that. So difficulty adjusts every 2016 blocks. So difficulty will adjust in about 10 days. Uh, and that'll be a good time to see what's going on with the hash rate as well. Um, you can see if you scroll down here, since, uh, you know, since this has been recorded on this website, there's been very little decreases in hash rate. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with the hash rate post having. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, let me know. Like and subscribe. Let's talk about mining. Hit me up on Twitter, at Carpe Noctum. Um, I get a lot of people talking to me about random stuff. Feel free to message me. Have a good one.